Welcome. I hope you're doing well today. Today we're going to start talking about some of the good things in Calvinism. I'm not being facetious. There are some good things in Calvinism. If you've watched my other videos, you might think, ah, he's just joking around, but I'm very serious. I want to talk about this in the midst of still continuing to do the other series focused on the unorthodox and unbiblical teaching of Calvinism and some of the dangers that go along with that, uh, with that philosophy. But I don't want to give the impression that everything in Calvinism is bad because some of you, the reason you are even considering Calvinism is because it has some very good things. Uh, for example, a focus on holiness and godliness, submitting to Jesus Christ as Lord, enduring in holiness, um, a true conversion, being born again by the power of God's Spirit, not just simply uh, praying a prayer or writing your name on a card and, and saying that now you're a Christian. Uh, and so you've seen those things, and you don't see those things in any other the other trending movements that are going on right now. And so I want to acknowledge that those things are very good, and you should not throw the baby out with the bathwater. Just because there are some unbiblical and unorthodox things in Calvinism, please do not go to another extreme and jump into some other movement that is worse and, and more dangerous. Things like the Hebraic Roots movement, the Hypergrace movement, uh, even uh, forms of dispensationalism. A lot of times whenever I see videos on people arguing against Calvinism, they're arguing, it, I find out it's dispensationalism. The reason they're against Calvinism is simply because it teaches that we need to submit to Jesus Christ as Lord in order to have eternal life. And so, my friend, don't jump into that because that's false. You know, Calvinism teaches something much better and much truer and that we need to submit to Jesus Christ and endure to the end in holiness because without holiness, no man will see the Lord. So my friend, don't be confused and throw the baby out with the bathwater. So we're going to go through some good points in the, in the, the videos, God willing. But in this video, I kind of want to give the conclusion first. The conclusion being that there's nothing better that's trending right now, but there is something that's better. Uh, I'm referring to the Anabaptist movement of the Reformation. Now, if you know much about the history of the Reformation, there were men like Luther and Calvin and Zwingli. These men broke away from Rome, but then they, they made their own little popedom. They connected the church and the state, and they used the power of the state to enforce religious rules and doctrine. And so they became like little popedoms all over. Men like, like Zwingli even fight, uh, died fighting in holy war against the Catholics. And so uh, these men are men of the sword and they were not afraid to go against Jesus' commands to love their enemies, but instead they compelled their enemies So, uh, with the sword. So um, I want to point you in the direction of Anabaptism. It's not going to be trending. It's not going to be popular. There are some things that call themselves Anabaptism uh, that are trending. Men like Greg Boyd, who uh, pushes the doctrines of open theism, uh, he often is, I've seen him speak uh, at a church called The Meeting House online, uh, also another man named Bruxy Cavey. If you watch these men, you will notice that they are very trendy, very hip, very cool, very social justice types, and I'm not pointing to that because if it's trendy and it's cool, then it's not Anabaptism because Anabaptism has to do with simplicity and focusing on discipleship, uh, not on these cool, trendy things that, uh, that Western culture loves so much. And so I'm not pointing there. I'm also not pointing to particular denominations like the Mennonites. Uh, the Mennonites, just like any other denomination, have good and bad. Uh, some are very conservative and some are going the route of, you know, social justice and all those things. I've seen people on Twitter, you know, uh, and, and I think, oh, they're, you know, Anabaptists, and then I read more in their bio, and I realize, no, no, they're uh, just going with the flow. And so I'm not pointing to those things, um, but what I am pointing to is just a, a mindset and an attitude that, and a perspective on the Christian life that comes from an Anabaptist perspective. Let me, let me read this quote from one of the early Anabaptist uh, leaders. Now, the Anabaptists in the Reformation, they were the ones that said, no, we're not going to take up the sword. We're not going to join the church with the uh, power of the government, but instead we are going to be lambs to the slaughter. We're going to preach the gospel. We're going to preach repentance. We're going to preach faith. We're going to preach holiness and let all the Protestants and Catholics kill us. And that's exactly what they did. So they lived loving their enemies, preaching the gospel to their enemies, but also dying by the hands of those that hated them for religious 
reasons. Because they said, no, we don't baptize babies. We baptize people who repent and trust in Christ. And so Anabaptism means rebaptizers. It was a name given to them by those that believed in baptizing babies, that believed that babies were already baptized. And these men were killed, and sometimes they were killed in the third baptism. Zwingli in Zurich killed some of his disciples with the third baptism. Third baptism means drowned them in the river. They were baptized as babies, then as adults, and then drowned in the river. And so we need to understand the history of the Reformation. It was written by the victors. And so you're not going to hear much about the Anabaptists from a good perspective. It's all going to be slander, or at least the majority of it, and because the victors are the ones killing them, slandering them, and they're the ones that wrote the history. But here, here Conrad Grable wrote this. He said, I believe the word of God without complicated interpretation, and out of this belief I speak. So the Anabaptists believed that the Bible was written not for scholars, not for seminary students, but written for disciples. And in fact, that a scholar cannot understand the Bible unless he happens also to be a humble, simple, childlike disciple. And so the Bible is meant to be something, it's the ground of our faith, it's the, it's the, the very foundation of our faith that we trust in its words, we trust in a simple interpretation of it, not high philosophy like Calvinism and other branches of Christianity would focus on. It also says this, the teaching of the Lord has been given for the purpose of being put into practice. In other words, the Bible, the scriptures were inspired to train us in righteousness, to reprove us, to teach us in godliness. It was not written for philosophy's sake. It was not written so that we could, we could parse out every Greek participle, but instead that we could put it into practice in our life. The, the Anabaptism focuses on godly discipleship in our lives. So there's some uh, resources I wanted to send you to that can help you give you, a, a, kind of give you a head start in being able to uh, understand the perspective of Anabaptism. One is a speech. I'll try to link to it up here. It's called uh, Anabaptist Perspective, and it kind of gives the focus and the, the main focus of Anabaptism, mainly discipleship, uh, simple uh, fellowship with, with like-minded believers. Also, there's a movie called The Radicals. Now, this movie was obviously not made by old-time Anabaptists, but by American moderns. Just like every other Christian movie, it had to have a couple kissing scenes in it, so I encourage you, you can fast-forward through that. But other than that, it gives you a good understanding of the life of Michael Sattler and his wife and the beginning of the Anabaptist movement and what they faced, the persecution they faced both from Protestant and Catholic alike because they would not take up the sword, but instead they wanted to submit to Jesus Christ as king and love their enemies. Another thing you can look up on, on Kindle, I think for one or maybe three dollars, you can get uh, the, the complete set of Menno Simon's writings. I'll try to put a link down below. Uh, and if you read his writings, you'll start to get a mind, you'll get the understanding of where the Anabaptists were coming from, a simple understanding of Scripture, a simple application of Scripture, and an obedience to the Scripture. It's not high-minded philosophy, but instead it's simple Christian teaching. So I encourage you to go there. Also, I will try to put a link up to a channel called Sound Faith. It has many different preachers and teachers on it. They have quite a selection of videos that you can kind of get some perspective from that's good teaching. Um, that it goes back not to Augustine's time, but they, the Anabaptists tried to go back before Augustine to the early church, the primitive church, and so that's why they're called the Radical Reformation because they wanted to go back to real Christianity, not to Augustine's philosophies and made-up doctrines. And so uh, as you, in Sound Faith, in that, uh, that channel, you'll be able to find some good things. In this channel, we also want to make some good teaching. We have one playlist, the Salvation Basics, but there's not a lot that I've made yet. And so in the meantime, you can go to Sound Faith and get some good teaching from over there. But in the future, God willing, we'll be able to make some more videos that are focused on a simple discipleship focus of the scripture. So I hope this has been helpful to you. Calvinism is not all bad. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Don't reject holiness and godliness and true repentance and being born again uh, just because it's in Calvinism and Calvinism is false. No, those things are true. And so follow those things, but I encourage you to look into Anabaptism, not the trendy forms of it, not a particular denomination, but historical Anabaptism that tried to go back to the early church teachings and put into practice uh, a kingdom Christianity. Hope this has been helpful to you. God bless.